ask you to hold your hands up and repeat after me. God, open my spiritual ears to hear you. God, open my spiritual ears to hear you. Give me the heart to submit to you. Give me the faith to walk in your confidence. God, give Denise your word. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Was that beautiful? Can we give them another hand, the choir? They worked very hard and diligent and long hours for that, right? Beautiful, beautiful job. My topic this morning is a change in heart. I'll be reading to you, <clears throat> excuse me, from Proverbs 20 and 5, from the King James Version, and it reads, Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. I've also pulled from the New Living Translation, and it reads, Though good advice lies deep within the heart, a person with understanding will draw it out. Amen? Yes. So do me a favor and just put your hand over your heart and just thump your heart, just as a symbolism of it still being there, it's still being. You're still alive, right? Yes. All right, so I expect some talk back. How many of you are ready to walk into your new season? Praise God, if you are ready to walk into your new season. In 2016, this is going to be a new year. How many of you need to see a change in 2016? You're tired of doing things the way you've been doing things, and now you're ready to do them the way God wants you to do them, amen? amen. How many of you can admit to yourself that that change has to start within you? Yes. Yes. Amen? <laughs> I'm going to talk to you this morning about an organ that is vital to our being, the heart. I'm going to speak to you about its physical form, and I'm going to speak to you about its spiritual form, okay? So in the, the physical form, I'm really going to talk to you about the healthy heart. The healthy physical heart is located in the physical body, and we know this. Its guidance comes from heart experts. We call them cardiologists. The cardiologist might instruct us, in order to maintain a healthy heart, we must keep a healthy diet. We must take vitamins and take in those nutrients, amen? We must apply routine exercising. How many of us do that or not? No smoking. That's what the heart specialist will say, right? Not good for your heart, no smoking. In the world of psychology, we know something called eustress, which is different from distress. And with eustress, we might react in the same way that we would when we were in distress, but the reason that we're reacting or the reason our body is responding is for something that is positive. I won the lottery! Yeah. Yeah. Right? Right, right? We're having a baby. You stress. He asked me to marry him. Oh my God. You stress, positive stress, amen? The function of the healthy physical heart results in the flow of blood through physical vessels in our natural physical bodies. And the purpose of the heart is to pump blood. Simple, complicated process, but a simple statement to pump blood. A healthy physical heart, a healthy spiritual heart located within the soul. 
communicates with the mind. The healthy spiritual heart says, I think I love him. The mind says, but you've only known him for two days. <laughs> the healthy spiritual heart says, you're right. Amen? amen. Women, amen? amen. I got to have my back here. Okay. Guidance for the healthy spiritual heart comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will instruct us that in order to maintain a healthy spiritual heart, we must fast. We must meditate on the Word of God. Amen? Amen. We must pray. We must, watch this, submit ourselves. Does that sound familiar to some people? We must submit ourselves to God. Amen? Amen. The function of the spiritual, the healthy spiritual heart, results in a flow of love through this vessel, through this vessel, our physical being. Amen? Amen. The purpose of the healthy spiritual heart is to love. So we've compared the physical versus the spiritual heart. And this morning, my focus is on the spiritual heart. My topic is a change in heart. And my question is, what is your main source? What, what are you pulling from? Where is that message coming from for you? Turn with me to Luke chapter 12, and I'll read to you verses 13 through 20. <laughs> and one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother, that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge over a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of a covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no more room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. A foolish heart will justify your sin. A foolish heart will deceive you to believe lust is love. A foolish heart will reason with why you can't let it go. It will persuade you to believe you're unworthy of love. A foolish heart will make you content with believing Prayer isn't necessary as long as you're a good person. It will make you believe you're a good person because you pray. What are the beliefs of your heart? Does it believe that you're unworthy? Does it believe that you're not good enough? Does it believe or tell you that you just you can't forgive them? That you can't forgive yourself? A foolish heart. Now turn with me, if you will, to 2 Timothy 2, 
and 20 through 22. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Verses 22 reads, Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, follow faith, follow charity, follow peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Amen? Amen. A pure heart. A pure heart shares the love of God at all times. I won't hurt you with my words or with my hands because I love you. A pure heart does not love for self-gain. A pure heart seeks God's guidance at all times, even when I fail, even through my weaknesses, even through my mistakes. Proverbs 24 and 16 says, though a righteous man may fall seven times, he will get up. A pure heart prays for others rather than judge them. It loves through the eyes of wisdom and not lust. It will forgive, no apology necessary. God is seeking a pure heart. And I didn't say a perfect heart, but rather a heart that earnestly desires him. Amen? Through your mistakes, through your weaknesses, a heart that relentlessly seeks him. Especially through trying times, a heart that will submit to him. I went on a business trip to Flagstaff about a month ago. And I had gone previously back in May and it was snowing, it was a winter wonderland. And I took pictures while I was there and I showed Alexander, my 10 year old, and he was so sad because he couldn't come with me, but it was a business trip. So I promised him the next time I have the opportunity to go, I will take you so you can see the snow. So I had this opportunity a month ago, came up. So I called my mom. I said, hey, I have a trip to go. I'm going up to Flagstaff. I want to take Alex. Let's make a weekend of it. She said, OK. So we went up. And they stayed in the hotel. And we had dinner. And we enjoyed the snow. And it was just beautiful. I'm a planner. OK? So the next morning, even though I love getaways, I'm like, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> so I planned for this trip. Walter had fixed my transmission and my alternator, and I had new tires and had an oil change done, and I was ready to go. So I knew that we were supposed to get there safely and back, if nothing else, by transportation, right? We get up at 6:30 that morning because, according to my plan, we were going to be back in Phoenix by 7:30. Get in the car, start the ignition, wouldn't start, wouldn't turn. So I sat there for a little bit. I said, God, I know you're in control. I did what I was supposed to do, so I know you're in control. So I turned the ignition, didn't start. I said, okay. Um, hmm. So I go back into the hotel, and I ask the concierge, have you heard of anyone ever going through something like this in cold climate? Yes, yes, yes. You'll have to wait until 10 o'clock when the sun is higher. And then your car should start if that's the problem. But there is a Coco's across the street. Go have breakfast and enjoy yourself. And I'm thinking, I don't want to enjoy myself. I want to go home. <laughs> so but my mom and Alex, they were all excited about it. And we get to take more pictures. And yeah, we get to go get breakfast. And so you know, it was a nice time. We come back to the car. And exactly at 10.06 AM, just when I was about to call AAA, it turned. No problem, it started. Praise God, we get back home. 
Well, it still bothered me because I'm a planner, and that wasn't supposed to happen, right? <laughs> so just in case it's something that I'm not aware of, I need to figure out what that is. So I go to AutoZone the next day, which was a Monday. Next day, I go to AutoZone. I speak with the technician. I tell him my whole drawn-out long story. Women, you know how we do it, right? So I tell him my whole drawn-out long story about how my car wouldn't start, and I couldn't understand why, and they told me it was too cold because my car is not used to the climate, and blah, 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 blah. And he says, oh, sounds like your battery. So he gets his devices, and he comes. He opens the hood of the car. He connects his devices to the hood of the car. And he says, uh. I said, what? And he said, I think it's your battery. I said, mm. And he said, well, let me do it again. I'll run the, the numbers again. We'll read your numbers again. If they come back the same, then you have a bad battery. So he connected the device again. And again, those numbers came up. And now we know that it's the battery. So he says to me, you need a new battery. And as a matter of fact, when you leave here, I wouldn't turn the car off because you probably have one or two more starts. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. So the first reaction for me was panic. The second reaction for me was faith. There was an O'Reilly's Auto Parts across the street. And I'm going to go across the street and find out how much their batteries are because I'm not paying what he's telling me my battery is worth, right? <laughs> so I go across the street. O'Reilly's, check the price, come and get back in the car. By the way, by faith, turned off the car, went into the store, came back, got into the car. And again, just as I'm about to call uh, uh, AAA, I call AAA and I talk to the representative that's on the telephone. He says to me, we can come to your home, we can take a look at your battery, and if that's the problem, we can exchange it for all of the same price that they're giving you to buy the battery at their store. Okay, cool. So I go pick up Alexander. We go home, the AAA technician gets there, and he calls. Denise, we're downstairs. We go downstairs, he goes over to the car. He says, so what seems to be the problem? So I tell him everything that I've told everybody else, that I've told all of you, right? And he says, what do he check? I said, he checked the battery. He said, what battery? I said, the battery under the hood. And he said, yeah, but. In your car, the main source is in the back seat, under the seat. Did he check the readings from that battery? I said, mm-mm. And he said, well, do you mind if I connect to that battery? I said, mm-mm. So he connected, and he said, Denise, this battery is better than it was when you first bought it two years ago. So my question, again, comes back to, what is your main source? What message are you hearing? What message are you believing? What message are you repeating? What message are you allowing your heart to say to your mind and your mind to say to your heart? And you're taking it in and you're applying it in your life and you're living it and you're believing it. Are you believing that God loves you, that God will heal your situation, that he will heal your body, that he will heal your mind, that he will heal your heart? Or are you believing that you're unworthy and you'll never change? You're set in your ways and no one can do anything for you. There's no book you can read. There's no prayer that can be spoken on your behalf. What are you believing? What message are you receiving and where are you receiving it from? So today I'm speaking to people who have a heart and they want to see a change in their heart. They want to see a change in their lives. They want to grow in their spiritual lives. They want to have communion with God. They want to be able to talk to him, to have relationship with him. And if that is you, raise your hand today. If you don't care about who's sitting next to you, but you know that there is a change that needs to take place in my life, and you're saying to yourself, God, I know I need to pray more. I know I need to meditate on your word more. I know I need to submit myself. I need to give it all to you. Not sometime, not part time, not half time, but full time. I need you in my life like I've never had anyone ever before in my life. Lord, I need you in my life. And if that is you, stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Let's have a new season start right now today. Stand to your feet. Give God a praise right now in this house. Clap your hands for our almighty God right now in this house. I don't care.
care what you look like. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care what you did last night. I don't care what you thought about this morning. I'm talking about right now. If you came into this place to have a change, to be able to walk out these doors and say, I am changed. My heart is changed. It is a change that has taken place in me. In 15 minutes, this change took place in me. And God did it. Amen? Amen. Raise your hands right now. I just want to pray with you right now. I just want to pray with you right now. Only to those who want that change. Only if you want that change. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now. Thank you, Jesus, for all the hands that are up in this room in your mighty name. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for bringing your word, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us understanding of your word, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us a heart to live your purpose, to live your will for our lives. In the name of Jesus, Father, I ask you right now to show us as your vessels, Lord. Show us how to love you more. Show us how to obey you more. Show us how to seek you more. Give us a desire to want you more in the name of Jesus, like we've never wanted you before in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now for forgiving us for our our sins father we thank you right now for purifying our hearts Lord now allow us to use what you've given us now allow us to go out into the world and to share what you've given us Lord in the name of Jesus allow me to cry these tears of joy because of your salvation because of your deliverance in the name of Jesus we thank you for your word we thank you for your anointing we thank you for your presence in this place and we love you, Lord. And today, in the name of Jesus, I declare that every person who has cried out in his heart, who has cried out in her heart, and who believes it is so. It is done. So give God a hand praise again. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.